Okay, so I just watched this Hunger Games prequel two weeks after it was first released into theaters for all of the public to consume, and let me tell you, I now understand why there hasn't been really any discourse about this movie online and why no one has really been talking about it. Yawn. So The Hunger Games, A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, a super long and unnecessary title that perfectly matches the tone, energy, atmosphere, marketing, release date, and experience watching this movie. I should probably put out a disclaimer right off the bat that, no, I have not read this book. I haven't read any of The Hunger Games books, as most of you could have probably surmised by watching literally any of my content, I cannot read. And even if I could, I would rather go on an isolated trek through the Alaskan wilderness with a sign calling myself Salmon as I slowly wait for my own demise alongside a picture in my back pocket of the girl that I sent for. That's the dream. So books are a no-go for this guy. And yet again, it seems like Hollywood entertainment will also be continuing to be a no-go around these parts. And before I get any of the comments saying, Godzilla! I'm working on it. I was cooking up a whole Napoleon video that I was going to drop after my last Marvel video. Go check that out, by the way. But I truly disliked that movie so much that I couldn't even be bothered halfway through the script. Which kind of seems like an unnecessary tangent, but the point of mentioning that is so I could truly stress that it's not like I hated this Hunger Games prequel as a whole, in theory. Going into it, I honestly didn't have any interest, therefore leading to no expectations. Hence, why I didn't see the movie until two, three weeks later. But unfortunately, The Hunger Games, A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is, yet again, a mid-tier film, riddled by its own grandiose ideas that led the movie to falling flat on its face right in front of our very eyes, a studio not knowing how to get out of their own way when it comes to the editing choices of this film, pacing and tonal shifts from a writing team that lead you, the audience, into believing that you're watching two separate movies. But more importantly, it's a movie that fits right alongside the meta right now in Hollywood of trying to milk a past and highly successful franchise. Unfortunately, it's about half a decade too late, with no real demographic the studio was really aiming for. Which is pretty much backed up with this installment into the esteemed franchise being the least profitable of them all. Again, as I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, a truly pointless and unnecessary entry into the franchise. But let's not be too sour about it. Let's talk. Okay, so it seems like the majority of us already have a pretty solid basis of what the Hunger Games movies of the yesteryears were about. Even if you're younger and haven't seen the movies. Wait. Man. Wait, it's actually crazy when you think about it. Shout out to Jennifer Lawrence. I give her a lot of hate for being a floppy disc of an actress, but she really did make the Hunger Games franchise a household name. Shout out to her. The point is, while the first Hunger Games trilogy pretty much introduced and laid out the basic structure of the world of Pan Am, the capital, the districts, and the Hunger Games, in reality, we as an audience were also experiencing the world alongside and through the POV of Katniss. But of course, before that, there were the yesteryears, and that's exactly what this movie attempts to tackle. Following Coriolanus, Coriolanus, Cor, Cori, Coriolanus? I, I think it's Coriolanus, but that is the first and only time you're going to get that pronunciation out of me. Fuck off, Suzanne. Following pre-President Snow, you watch as the movie unfolds into a half-assed character study on how the man came to be, uh, well, the genocidal and tactical maniac most of us know him to become. In the current world, where he is a little fish in a sea of bigger fish, Snow and his colleagues each are tasked as mentors for the upcoming 10th annual Hunger Games. At this point in capital history, the Hunger Games hasn't really garnered the attention of the majority of capital citizens, as growing concerns and different ideals start to 
flowed around the capital surrounding the very intention and need for the Hunger Games, Headmaster Viola Davis desperately searches for answers in her relenting quest to keep the Hunger Games afloat. As luck would have it, answers most of the time come in the most unexpected of places, and in the case of pre-President Snow, Head Game Master Viola Davis, Tyrion Lannister, and the future of the districts as a whole, some of those answers lead to the fortunate future for some, and an unfortunate future for most. But that's not us, luckily. You're just watching me on the couch. So with that, let's get to... Well, first we might as well touch on pretty much the only great thing that I've heard from this movie before watching it. And that's the performance of Snow himself, or Tim Blythe. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He was really good at his craft, and you can really tell that he took the role pretty seriously. I'm sure we'll definitely see him in more projects in the future. As mentioned before with the film as a whole and the tonal shifts you're forced to sit through feeling like two different movies, he was kind of the one constant that kept the audience in check of what was even going on. As an audience member, specifically one that has seen the Hunger Games franchise and is familiar with the lore, knowing the type of character, foe, and monster that Snow becomes when he's facing Katniss, and even before her time, Blythe really does an incredible job at portraying the humanity that the character once had that will eventually be lost. He's asked to pretty much carry this movie when it comes to the emotional side of things, acting next to a piece of wood with a beautiful voice that's pretty much expected. But easily the most engaging and immersive scenes are when you're actually watching the character of Snow become the character of President Snow. The descent, the life choices, and character decisions that lead to the inevitable outcome. And while Viola Davis's character with the constraints of her own writing was, yes, a clown character, Viola Davis makes her not a clown character. Wait, what am I, what am I doing? I don't have to sit here and sell you Viola Davis. You know her work, you know her craft. She's one of the best currently, and one of the best to ever do it. How dare you! But the reason why I say their character dynamic was able to work so well was largely due to how little the capital was fleshed out in the earlier installments of the franchise. Watching the two characters navigate the almost unrecognizable capital in this movie, compared to what we know it to become, is easily one of the most engaging and interesting elements the movie has going for it. We've seen the fall, but we haven't really seen the rise of such a momental feat that the Capitol and President Snow become. The character revelations and plot twists hit at the right times, and I would honestly say that at the film's highest of peaks, was able to seamlessly blend and bridge the pen -M of the yesteryears, the pen -M of the current, and the pen -M of the future. Anyway, let's talk about... Yeah. You knew where I was going with this. The elephant in the room. Well, can Rachel Zegler really even be described as that anymore? At this point, her herself and the controversy that follows her is pretty noticeable, and I don't think that's going away anytime soon. In regards to the movie, as mentioned before, and in order to say something positive in the divisive internet culture world that we live in, Rachel Zegler can fucking sing. And I mean really really good honestly which leads to the question of what is she doing in hollywood why are you not on broadway singing about hamilton or the lion king doing live action plays and musicals with the talent that she has it's pretty eye-opening and if i was her agent that's exactly what i would be doing because her acting is so subpar and non-existent i had to look up her name while typing this review an actual plank of wood with a beautiful voice. Which is pretty unfortunate because the high focus on her character and the character relationship between her and Snow really lead to the film's true and main downfall, the pacing. As mentioned before, I felt like I was watching two separate films. For those of you returning to my channel, you guys know that the laziness of title cards coming in the form of acts in a movie is disgusting. And I would never understand why choices like that are made from a director or writer side of things because it truly can't be 
that hard in order to blend in transitional scenes that keep the audience engaged and interested. The pacing and tonal shifts from scenes involving Snow and the development of his character within the narrative and world building side of things was way more immersive compared to, say, the relationship building scenes between Snow and Lucy Gray. That's Rachel Zegler's character. All with the grace of a mind-numbingly slow setup coupled with an extremely fast and unsatisfying payoff. Again, the pacing was abysmal in this film. At the end of the day, The Hunger Games of Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is, yet again, another mid-tier Hollywood film. But hey, it's the meta right now to milk successful franchises with mid-tier entries until the money runs dry, right? Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I want to keep this outro pretty short, but I did finish Loki Season 2, and I'm watching Godzilla Minus One and IMAX on Thursday, so I am pretty excited for that. I'm still on the fence on if I should make an Invincible Season 2 video or wait until the entirety of its Season 2 complete. I think we're probably just going to go with that. Follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that a little bit more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.